Today on Engineering Newswire, we're playing catch with Disney robots, colonizing Mars with deep-pocketed donors, and beaming into Star Trek classrooms. Researchers at Durham University are designing and testing a classroom that boldly goes where no classroom has gone before. It's a project that's been dubbed SynergyNet. Children use multi-touch desks in a new classroom to work together in new ways to solve and answer questions and problems using inventive solutions. It improved both mathematical flexibility and fluency, while children working with paper and pencil only improve in flexibility. Personally, I blame bum erasers. SynergyNet has set out to integrate a fully collaborative system of desks that is built into the fabric and furniture of the classroom. The desks are the central component, each networked and linked to its main smart board. The team designed software and desks that recognize multiple touches on the desktop using vision systems that see infrared light. So the desks act like multi-touch whiteboards and several students can use any individual desk at once. They also feature a live feed that goes directly to the teacher who can quickly intervene to help an individual while the group continues to work. I'm all for collaborative math in a high-tech grade school, but until the classroom has a bridge and a holodeck, consider me unimpressed. You don't even need to use your hands to surf the web anymore. It might sound like a corny Star Trek plot, but when it comes to mind-controllable computers, the real thing is making giant leaps forward. Stanford University researchers have now developed an algorithm known as ReFit that vastly improves the speed and accuracy of neural prosthetics that control computer cursors. The system relies on a silicon chip implanted in the brain, which records action potentials in neural activity from an array of electrode sensors, and then sends that data to a computer. The ReFit algorithm is able to make adjustments on the fly while guiding the cursor to a target just as a hand and eye would work in tandem to move a mouse cursor onto an icon on your computer desktop. If the cursor strays too far to the left or the right, the user adjusts their imagined movements to redirect the cursor in the right direction. With this algorithm, the system responds to these corrections and adjusts accordingly. For the time being, the team has been focused on improving in cursor movement rather than creation of their robotic limbs. But that is not out of the question as they progress through more complex neural prosthetics. In a world where electronics are becoming more pervasive, flexibility is a highly desirable trait. But finding materials with the right mix of performance and manufacturing costs remains a challenge. Now a team of researchers from the University of Pennsylvania has shown that nanoscale particles, or nanocrystals, of the semiconductor cadmium selenide can be printed or coated on flexible plastics to form high-performance electronics. Whereas amphimorphous silicon uses a process that operated at several hundred degrees, these nanocrystals can be deposited at room temperatures and annealed at mild temperatures, opening up the possibility of using more flexible plastic foundations. Because the nanocrystals are dispersed in an ink-like liquid, multiple types of deposition techniques can be used to make circuits. These researchers used a spin coating where centrifugal force pulls a thin layer of the solution over a surface, but the nanocrystals can be applied through dipping, spraying, or inkjet printing as well. Using this process, the researchers built three kinds of circuits to test the nanocrystals' performance for circuit applications, an, in an inverter, an amplifier, and a ring oscillator. With the combination of flexibility, relatively simple fabrication processes, and low power requirements, these circuits could pave the way for new kinds of devices and pervasive sensors, which could have biomedical and security applications. You ever get tired of your kid always asking you to go out and throw the ball around with them? Now Disney means to spend that quality time with your children in an attempt to feel what it's like to have a child of its own. Robotics experts at Disney's lab in Pittsburgh have created a humanoid robot that can play a game of catch. This eerie-faced robot not only tosses the ball to you, but he can find, register, and catch it as well. The robot uses a connect to sense and track the trajectory of an object thrown toward it, adjusting so that it can catch the projectile with just one hand. He even manages to respond by keeping his eye on the ball, or provide dismayed gestures if you shank a pass. He will turn his face to his partner as they move, utilizing extra sensors that track and follow the direction of his partner. Still no help for smalls, though. Sometimes you're just born to throw like a girl. You play ball like a girl! So whether Elon Musk is a real Tony Stark or just a master pyramid schemer is up to you. 
but the billionaire is working on plans to colonize Mars with an 80,000 person red suburbia. I just wonder what those soccer mom Mars buggies are going to look like. Accompanying founders of the new Mars colony would be large amounts of equipment, including machines to produce fertilizer, methane, and oxygen from Mars atmospheric nitrogen and carbon dioxide, and the planet's subsurface water ice. As the colony progresses, the transports will carry fewer supplies and more immigrants. Now, Musk doesn't plan to just take 80,000 of our smartest astronauts, scientists, and engineers on this $36 billion endeavor. Though he didn't state when the colonization would begin, he did mention that if you happen to have half a million dollars and a strong constitution, you could snag yourself a ticket. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm David Manti and this has been your Engineering Newswire.